Ross. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Ross. And Alan, I seen that. Earlier this year, I reached out to you, Ross, and I said, you did. Will you watch God's Not Dead? And yeah, <laughs> you agreed. It changed your life for the better. You've well, become uh, <laughs> a pastor. You're leading a church now. And yes. You're, everything about your fundamentals of <laughs> thought and religion and just <laughs> living has changed completely. Yeah. So yeah. because of that, you decided that you needed to pay me back and make Indeed. me watch <laughs> the kissing booth. Yeah, my favorite film of the year, I would say, easily, uh, by so a ha- mile. So how did you find The Kissing Booth? What, like, what, what compelled oh, you to watch it initially? What compelled? Because I, I, I've seen it on Netflix, and I had no yeah. compulsion. There's no desire in me, no, no, no drawing to that movie. What, what was That's it? That's fair. Um, I just... Netflix original stuff now is so interesting and unique mm. and uh, bad um, <laughs> usually yeah. now that I just I sometimes I just try to pick a random thing to watch like a random Netflix original because they pump them out all the time yeah and I just try to find one that just looks like the craziest one because I have a, a real love for crazy trash um, yes. but this movie really this was the for this podcast this was the fifth time I've seen it because. <laughs> I I'm mildly even, obsessed with it. I it's I like know ten hours. <laughs> it's you could it's have an hour forty. Your life. It's an hour forty, but it feels longer. <laughs> it feels like ten hours every time, frankly. Oh, but yeah. I, I just I I can't get th- this movie out of my head. It's there are, there are images burned into my brain from it, ideas, lines, and I just it's the, it's the kind of movie I bring over my friends and I say we have to watch the kissing booth. You need to see this. I think it's in league with like the room or something like that. I think it's that bad, that crazy good. I think mm, I don't know. The room <laughs> the room is so interesting in a different way to me. Like Yeah. The the fact that it was able to be made at all and that people went along with him and did everything that mm-hmm. he was asking them to do is part of the fascination of that. The kissing but booth I, is like... The, the room was made beginning to end at the whim of a crazy person. Yes. The, the kissing booth had presumably more than one creative voice behind it pushing it. And I want to know why. What was it about this story? And you said you were tweeting me as you were watching it, uh, as you were as your brain was slowly collapsing. Yeah. And you said this feels like it was written by a high schooler, and you weren't yes. wrong because was this it? is actually this is actually based off an ebook by a girl. Uh, I think I believe her name is Beth. I don't know her last name. Okay. But it was her, her ebook was published, I believe, when she was 15 years old. Okay. She wrote this story. I think she was uh, really into Twilight and like young young adult stuff. And she wrote well, that's this what ebook. It, yeah, that's what it felt like. Kind of, it felt yeah. like Twilight. And now Twilight, they, they all kind of do. <laughs> they all kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it was. I was gonna say Twilight was a um, like a fan fiction, but no, it was Fifty Shades of Grey was another right. fan fiction off of Twilight. Yeah, right. uh, but I will say for mm-hmm. Beth, congratulations. Because you just published an ebook at 15, which, you know, publishing a book is pretty easy now, but you know, you, you stuck it through, you had a creative idea in your head and it was successful enough to warrant a Netflix original movie. Like that's pretty cool for like a piece of work from when you're 15 years old. Yeah. I would not want the things I wrote when I was 15 years old out on Netflix for the world to see. And but just the way this movie is, um, I mean, it was it was adapted. I think the guy who directed this also wrote it, um, and I I have questions about him as a person <laughs> because <laughs> because of how he executed this. But um, as a filmmaker and as a human being, yeah. But it's it's just it's so bizarre because. It, 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 I haven't read the book, obviously. I, I didn't take the time to read the book for more research. I do kind of want to now that I've seen the movie so many times. and I, like, I'm yeah, really you, kind of into the characters. You definitely <laughs> like, need to read that book. 
I'm oddly emotionally invested in this story. <laughs> I, I get emotionally invested in weird things sometimes, and this mm-hmm. is one of those where I just I know the characters' names. I know pretty much this movie beat for beat by now yeah. because it's so memorable. Like everything that happens is it's so interesting. Memorable. When I was I just tweeting agree. you, you were like, "Just wait until you get to rule seven, eight, nine. Yeah, Which rule one? seven. Rule seven. Rule yeah. seven was that you there's no there's nothing you can do to your best friend that can't be fixed with ice cream. With ice cream. <laughs> so, that was my favorite rule. <laughs> I had some big problems with these rules. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> you, saw some, you saw some flaws in the logic in this film, you're telling me? That's crazy, because dude. they established the rules when they were seven years old. Yes. Um, why was the brother like, siblings are off, off <laughs> limits? Like, what seven-year-old well, we, is considering, like, oh, I don't want you to love my sibling. I don't want you to fall in I love with my I, super hot nine-year-old maybe, brother. Maybe there were amendments later on. I'm not sure what the exact okay. timeline is of the rule book. I assume that was a later edition. Gotcha. But she just thirsts over him in public, like so openly that I guess like he made up that rule the second she became attracted to him because she is. I mean, you, did you know those two are dating in real life? The oh, are they? I didn't know that. The girl who plays L and the guy who plays uh, Noah Flynn. Yeah. yeah, they're dating in real life, which shocked me because they have no chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's more because Joey King, the actress, she's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, quite a lot of stuff. She was in an episode of The Flash. That's what I know her from mainly, of course. Um, yeah. she was in The Conjuring. I think she's in was yeah the the first Conjuring movie, and she was like a kind of a child star, and she's kind of growing up into it. Which is why it made me uncomfortable the way they filmed her at times. Yeah, I think I think she was eighteen when they made this movie. I I, I was trying to check, uh, not I, check based on the production, not not in a weird way. Jeez, oh yeah. wow, I kind of oh wow. <laughs> I was trying to check based on when her birthday was compared to when this movie came out and like when it would have been in production because I wanted to know if the director was filming like the pants ripping scene and the skirt scene where there's like close ups and they really kind of focus on it or like when she's undressing in a bikini and they focus on it in weird ways. I really, really wanted to know if she was 18 when they were filming these things because it made me super uncomfortable because I've I've been kind of watching her grow and her career kind of go on since she was a kid. And I don't, I guess that, that was just... Uh, this movie makes me horrendously uncomfortable. Yeah, it should. Just in general. <laughs> the, uh... Yeah, they have her undress a lot in this movie for Quite it being directed at... A much younger audience like sort of the, the i don't know what the audience is i don't yeah maybe there's no thought behind that maybe there's no like who are we making this for because i yeah. this is this is clearly someone in high school telling someone in junior high this is how high school works because anyone I, older yeah, than yeah. that is like no, this is not. This is not That's what a high school's point. like. But like, this it is... also, yeah, it very much feels like a high schooler's like fantasy perspective because yeah. mm-hmm. everyone has like a really nice house and room and like like the Flynns live in a mansion and that's just kind of goes unexplained yeah. and they all just seem to party all the time and even when they get detention, like they're just kind of chilling and hanging out and it's fine and when they get in trouble it's all fine and it the the this is kind of like riverdale to me where i feel like this movie came from a parallel dimension <laughs> like it, it does not feel of this earth yeah like things are just off enough like um when she wears the skirt to school and that guy slaps her ass and then they're in detention together and he's like flirting with her and asking for her number and she's just like yeah of course oh i like yeah. you now uh you just he just openly molested her and like the campus square and now she's just i mean maybe she's just really desperate but i don't know that seems weird i think the fantasy is having people fight over you yeah that was a big part of this also like like the the bad boy who you can change kind of thing because there was no repercussions for any of the stuff as long it was coming out of desire for her attention she's like yeah that's what i want that's yeah 
I'm fine with you punching this guy in the face or you know, yeah. getting in a fight with your brother or whatever. As long as it's coming out of your desire for me, yeah, everything's yeah. game. And it's I want to talk like about weird. I, I want to talk about the character of Noah Flynn because Noah Flynn. Well, should we go most... through? Why don't you break down the plot? Because there's not much. <laughs> okay. And at least people <laughs> will know. <laughs> okay, so the plot. Um, the plot of this movie is. There's a girl named Elle Evans, uh, and she's going to, to high school, and she has a best friend named Lee Flynn, and he has a hot older brother with a, a, a the very hottest. authentic American – the hottest, and everyone calls him Flynn, so you know he's cool. Um, <laughs> so they're going to school together, and they're trying to think of a, a new – uh, thing they can do because the school's doing a big fundraiser and Lee and L figure oh a kissing booth of course that'll drive everyone crazy and then um, a forbidden romance emerges when uh, L and Lee's brother Noah have an encounter at the kissing booth okay yeah. that's the plot can we talk about the character of Noah Flynn because this man is insane <laughs> wait one, is... one second I have... so I was homeschooled <laughs> but I imagine <laughs> kissing booths would not be sanctioned by a public school there's so much about this movie there's so much <laughs> there's so much that just makes me upset noah flynn okay yeah. so this is a character who is introduced as like the kind of cool older brother yeah and then in the opening montage which is a, a whole new breed of crazy like oh, oh yeah oh my god just <laughs> the montage the most is insane. so bad do you have any idea? I have shown several film students this movie. Do you have any idea how film students react to this montage? I would <laughs> they assume they so... start clapping. They stand <laughs> they up and cheer. So... I have a fr- I had a friend when when it cuts around all these happy things and then it cuts to my mom's I had to dead. find out my mom was in the hospital. Yeah. My friend David screamed so loud. <laughs> he screamed. He screamed like he was watching someone die. <laughs> it was well, they, upset. They, well, the music <laughs> change. <laughs> the music change is so abrupt too. Not only is it emotionally jarring, but the mu- just the the tonal change is like, oh wow, that was intense. I think I tweeted you that it it they actually yeah. did the south park beer commercial earnestly in this movie yeah it's it's amazing it's incredible because <laughs> it's, like, it's all happy like yeah. music and them having fun and like we did this we did this, halloween we, did we made ice cream we went and played then dance, dance revolution dead. all day and then my mom's dead <laughs> it's crazy it's insane this movie it it's i think you can make a case bad exposition yeah because that's what they were but trying I to avoid. They were trying to avoid I, I, her being like, oh, do you remember when my mom died when I was in third grade? That was sad. Yeah, that's true. So like, but let's I, do let's do a montage. That would be cool. That would be interesting. And it'll be, yeah. they were trying to do up is what they were trying to do. But I think not, so, not but not good. correctly. <laughs> I think that you could make a case, a legitimate case for this being like a parody of these kind of movies because it yeah. feels like it's making fun like everything that everything that happens is is tonally so goofy and like mm. off kilter, it feels like an absurdist comedy. But it's I know I, it's I, I think know you're it's making being a played reach. straight. <laughs> I think that's what you want. Listen, you're just trying to make listen, yourself feel better. <laughs> I'm a student of media. <laughs> I look I I read between the lines. I think <laughs> the kissing booth is an absurdist comedy that is taking apart the cliches of this. I need to talk about Noah Flynn. Noah yeah. Flynn. <laughs> okay. His primary character trait is that he fights. That yes. is what he's introduced as. He punches he and sits be, on you and punches yeah, you more. He seems to be nothing but an ignorant, uh, like bloodthirsty sociopath. Yeah. And then we find out later, and you know, they're family friends, and he and Ella's into him because he's a hunk. And then as it goes on, like he, it turns out he's been telling people not to date her, and he's running like this weird controlling scheme around her love life. And then, like, he's so weirdly manipulative and mm. crazy. And then later on, when they get together and they're not telling anybody or they haven't made it official before they have sex under the Hollywood sign, which is fenced off. You can't just walk to the Hollywood sign. No. And I... Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, j- I can't... <laughs> And then in the scene before that, when they're at the beach party at night, I guess they just partied all day at their house, at their Mm -hmm. beachfront mansion, which they live in because I guess their mom is Molly Ringwald. I I choose to believe (laughs) in the universe of this movie, Molly Ringwald is actually their mom. And that's how they they got the money. It's fair. And then (laughs) 
and then he that one guy makes a crack about um uh Noah being with her because it's like his little brother's sloppy seconds and then he football tackles the guy and everyone looks at him like he's a crazy maniac yeah. and then he's chasing Elle up the hill and she's like running away and crying and he like smacks the hood of the car and is yelling at her and then she has to be like you can't fight anyone anymore and you have to control your temper and it's it's such a weirdly dysfunctional like oh. beginning to a romance he's given no redeeming qualities which is nuts also, he's going to Harvard. I feel like that's that an important is, note. That is the crazy... <laughs> mm, my God, he's going to freaking Harvard. Cause Not, it's, yeah, like how many times do you think he had on his record that he got in a fight at, in high school? It's like the every other thing, day, it's right? The, it's the ultimate like high schooler wrote this thing because yeah. they're like oh he got into a good school what's yeah. the first good school you think of <laughs> if he'd said like yale or brown i'd be like okay sure they should have just on been a like day but school <laughs> he he's going to school <laughs> like they didn't need to pick one and just like oh he's going to college he's going to university in a couple of he's months, such so a he's harvard leave. man he's a classic harvard man <laughs> later in the movie he gets in one fight with his girlfriend and disappears off the face of the earth and as l tells us yeah. to the point his attendance was so bad it got to the point where he almost didn't graduate but he's going to harvard <laughs> i mean harvard's pretty to have... easy to get into although if your theory yeah. about their mom <laughs> being molly ringwald well oh that's well, true. maybe uh, she, okay. she she pulled some strings Remember when Molly Ringwald had like a career, <laughs> and now she's in this ago. in Riverdale. <laughs> she's in Riverdale. Was she in Riverdale? And this, yeah, she's. I've, uh, Archie's I've never mom. watched an episode of that. Dude, you gotta. <laughs> um, Molly Ringwald yeah. is like my patron saint of trash now. Like I know something's gonna be bad if Molly Ringwald <laughs> shows up. <laughs> I, I check her IMDb every day, so I know what I have to watch next. <laughs> Just Google alerts on her. Always. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's so many there's so many crazy things that clearly come out of the head of a high school student. Like yeah. the the rules being the foundation of their friendship being one of them is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like when I was watching it, I was like, man, I wonder what it would have been had someone in high school wrote a movie during when I was in high school. And it would have been like the MySpace top eight. That would have been the most right. important thing. Like, right. who's on your yeah. top eight? Oh, why did you move this? Per and it's like, as an adult <laughs> now, it's like, oh, wow, that means nothing. There's like no value to any of that. But it was oh, yeah. so important at the time. Well, my space is after my time. I how, to that. <laughs> or before my time. <laughs> oh, after my time. <laughs> the, um, oh, it's was, it was such a big deal. You just made me feel so old. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> um, but it's yes, just like uh, NSYNC. No, yeah, NSYNC, Britney Spears. I do, I do um, love NSYNC though. I won't lie. <laughs> it's not a joke. Well, so, I what were NSYNC. the rules? Do you? Do you okay, I, I, I trust I, you. They don't. You I don't know how many. Movie. I don't know how many rules there are overall. I'm just gonna Google it. There's right at least now. 19, uh, right? I think at the least highest 19. one they mentioned is 19. I looked this up before. I found an article that mm. ranked the rules in in terms of uh, their Ooh. importance. So who um, who wrote that article? That person. I don't know. It's on. Did uh, you write it's it? On, um, don't lie. <laughs> you caught me. It's on sweetiehigh.com, my favorite website. <laughs> my my journal. There. Okay, I think there are six that are portrayed in the actual. Uh, there are six that are portrayed in the actual movie. So yeah. there's not rule number one, which is only your best friend gets to know your birthday wishes. Which is so weird fine yeah just a weird <laughs> thing to define uh rule number seven like, my favorite no matter how mad you are at your best friend you have to forgive them if they get you ice cream uh rule number nine relatives of your best friends are totally off limits rule number yeah. six if you can't tell your best friend about something you're doing you probably shouldn't be doing it not a terrible rule yeah that's not bad yeah yeah rule number two uh never share our secrets with anyone else i mean fair enough trust yeah. and honesty and then uh, rule number 18, always be happy for your besties' successes, which is, just kind of goes without saying uh, <laughs> if you're friends with someone. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah. I do love – because this article is great because um, it also – it gives like a breakdown of why the rules like are, are ranked the way they are. It's pretty good. This article is great. I'll send it to you later so you can do a little <laughs> digging. 
cool. The um, journalistic insight of your own. The idea that you could just say rule number two, please. And your yeah. friend know that <laughs> exactly what you're saying. If there's at least 19. Crazy. <laughs> like, like, I can't imagine that. Yeah. It, uh, I don't even, this movie's so upsetting. <laughs> It's well. I mean, it just struck me as very much like a high schooler like writing thing. Like, oh, this will be clever. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah. they have all these rules for friendship, and I'll set them up here and bring them back here. But they're not really. It's it's like a high schooler wrote it because it's not very good. No one really writes good things in high school. No, it's kind of well, a it's it's a joke for a reason. You know, I feel like it's more. <laughs> oh, I wish my friends did this <laughs> type of a thing. <laughs> than like maybe actually yeah. You're, well, I mean, the wish fulfillment is you've got this giant Harvard-going hunk who's a bad boy but with a heart of gold who's... Um, and a mind for Harvard. Yeah, he's, he's great in bed, but he's got a mind for Harvard, and he's a football star, and everyone loves him, but he's he only really likes you. Like, that's yeah. the kind of thing it's going for. And, yeah, I mean, it's kind It does kinda very Edward much Cullen-ish. feel like... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It feels very much like Twilight. Like A little bit, yeah. I can see that. It, I mean, even he kind of reminded me physically, or like maybe his his features his, on his face. I was like, "Oh, this maybe. this seems like Twilight." The the way they filmed it, him walking into the classroom and all that. Yeah, he was probably cast for that. I mean, <laughs> generically yeah. handsome, like no. He looks easily forty five years old, but you know <laughs> that's no big <laughs> deal because a, half the high school students in this do not look like high. School. I mean, that's a typical thing for movies like this. But yeah. I mean, Joey King looks like she'd be in high school. The, yeah, the I mean the Super Eight kid, her best friend, looks like he'd be in high school. So she was supposed to be fifteen. Is that I right? I think seventeen. I think sixteen. Okay, oh, she was turning. Yeah, because I thought cause the brother if, was like two years older. Yeah, so he'd be 18 if he's going off, right? So he'd yeah, be 18, like, 19. So she'd be 16, yeah. Oh, well, he probably 16. got held back a few years. <laughs> no, he's a Harvard man, excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> he aces every um, class. <laughs> yeah, so she's, so she's 15 going on 16 in this movie. Right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's probably, I'm get, yeah, that's probably that about sounds right. right. This movie's weird. No, wait, no, isn't their 16th? That. Isn't this, this movie, like how, doesn't this movie end with their 16th birthday? This movie ends. Yeah, with the, it, well, it ends party. with a it ends with a birthday. I just don't remember which one. I feel like it's feel probably like be sixteen like, because that's like that, the that most important right. one. That sounds um, right. Yeah, I, but, I I know a lot about this movie, but I can't remember that detail. I'll have to read up on my lore. You're, I'm disappointed in you. I the, want the, uh, I want the script. How <laughs> I want to copy how, the script? How often they sexualize her for her to be fifteen or sixteen is so creepy. Yeah, it's 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 an odd decision creatively, especially because, like I said, I was trying to make sure Joey King was eighteen when they were filming this because I was like, oh god, I hope she was because this would be really uncomfortable you, if she you wasn't. You liked it way too much. <laughs> you big old no, creep. It, whoa, hey, come on, man, come <laughs> on, man, come speaking, on. Speaking speaking of you being a creep, Ross. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, Arrow. I don't like this. And this movie. Both yeah. have a love story that involves someone being basically siblings with someone and falling in love. Okay, my no, I, uh, just a second. I we asked have, you. We have to go back on this point. My 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 SD card just got full on my camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before your your camera died, I was asking you, mm-hmm. what is it about your fascination with seeing someone who's basically siblings fall in love? I <laughs> I don't seek this out. Yeah. It keeps happening to me. It's a narrative that I think is being forced on me in my life. Full full like disclosure, universe. I don't I don't like this. I don't like that it happens in the <clears> flash. <throat> I don't like that it's it happens so... here. Especially because he's so weirdly controlling. It's worse here. It's much worse here. I think it's way worse here. I think I think it's more understandable he's... here. The their relationship he's... is worse in the kissing booth. But in yeah, oh yeah. Arrow, oh yeah. <laughs> In Arrow, they're like legit brother and sister. That's true, yeah. In Flash, they were raised like they were raised in the same house. I guess here it's more like they're like really close family friends. Yeah, and he kind of exists in the fringe. But it's 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 because he refers to her as his little sister early in the movie, and then it reveals that he had yeah. like this grand plan to get her, and I I sort of. Because it's all kind of chance. Like, he seems to like her. 
and, but he never really acts on it. And then he like makes fun of her and tries to control her constantly. And then, yeah. Um, and then it's it's just like I it, it, then it, then it, at the kissing booth he just like he just it just by chance by complete accident they kiss. And then he seems to be like, oh, I actually like her. But I thought he did, or he just didn't want people dating her. It's so weird. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm well, so confused. <laughs> what? Why did that guy give him cuts in the kissing booth? Because there's a the nerdy guy was getting ready yeah. for his turn. The OMG right. girls, which is the dumbest name for the girls. Oh, but Olivia, their Olivia, actual. Mia, and Gwyneth. <laughs> Gwyneth. I love the OMG. They're girls. like, oh, we <laughs> that's my- we don't want to we don't want to kiss this guy. Let's get L to do no. it. L eat anything. This right. is this <laughs> is payback for uh, not making this guy kiss for money. Yeah, but, they wanted. Can Flint we talk about? Noah. Can we real quick just talk about the fundraiser, the size and the scale of the fundraiser? Why are they raising funds if they have the money to put something of that scale on? That's the teenage <laughs> fantasy angle. Yeah. Cuz it's a beautiful setup. They seem to have a whole like fairground devoted to just this high school and the high school booths are insanely professionally put together. The kissing mm-hmm. booth is enormous. Yeah, they and definitely they spent on, more they money. They made more money <laughs> just setting it up. That's why they need a fundraiser. They keep throwing fundraisers. <laughs> <laughs> They're just throwing fundraisers so they can throw another fundraiser. <laughs> what was the fundraiser even for? I don't know. <laughs> Prom? I don't remember. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe it was prom. They never. I don't think they actually say because okay. I feel like I would know that. That's the detail I would hold on to. That's that yeah. would stay in my brain for sure. They just need money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I don't think a, a school would be like. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Let's have a kissing booth. That sounds like something yeah. we should have. Because it's just like doing. the student council who signs off on it. The student council, the people, and I just. Everyone the administrators are bizarre. are terrible. Like uh, in the beginning, when she rips her pants <laughs> and she wears the tiniest skirt that has yeah. ever existed, the she principal's like, to wear. <laughs> "Why? Why did you wear this?" And she's like, "Oh, my pants ripped." He's like, "Well, where are your backups?" And she's like, "These oh, are yeah. these are the backups to my backups or whatever." Yeah. And uh, I said, like, "Well, just wear jeans then." Like you, well, this is way I more inappropriate. Was, then, I was more thinking, how does the principal know her pants routine? That was my concern. Because <laughs> he's like, because because she does that joke. It's like a callback joke, kind of. But yeah. again, it's executed badly, like everything in this movie. Yeah. And it's like, because she, she she says that to Lee, and Lee's her best friend. Lee knows everything about her life. Yeah, he would know that she has like backups to backups. That's the discussion they've had. Yeah. Why does the principal of the school know how many pairs of pants she has readily available? He's Is it spying part of the on uniform? Her. Is it part of the uniform? I don't know. Maybe. But it shouldn't he just be able to wear other pants? I, ah. Yeah, like... This movie hurts me. I this feel, movie hurts my brain and my heart and my soul. I, <laughs> I feel like there should have been more punishment for wearing a skirt that short than breaking the Probably. dress code. Like, that seems like way more egregious to the dress code than yeah. just wearing jeans or wearing a different color skirt. Or being Because then, like, yeah. the principal would be like, hey, why are you breaking the dress code? And he's like, oh, my pants ripped this morning. Yeah. My other pants were at the dry cleaners. I didn't want to wear a teeny tiny micro skirt that didn't seem appropriate and he'd be like yeah yeah that's surely reasonable she has surely she has one other set of pants at all <laughs> in her life surely you would think so you but. would think but this is the kissing booth <laughs> so <laughs> throw logic out the window i i have so many notes. what what do you think <laughs> the moral of the story is here what do you think they're trying to say well, what they're trying to say with this movie is the kissing booth is literally the most important thing that's ever happened in anyone's life. Yeah. Which is nuts because it seemed to affect at least pretty much two couples got together from the mm-hmm. same family. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know why everyone was so obsessed with it because they well, never say how much money they made, only that they made more money than all the other booths combined, which is insane to me <laughs> just the concept <laughs> well lee getting together with the other girl i don't remember her name that one seemed does she have one i don't know. I think so i don't remember i think it's like Sarah and that one seemed like, driven by the kissing booth 
Yes, true. But Noah but and has, Elle yeah. just seem like, oh, that was a convenient time for it to start. Like, Noah's yeah. desire for her apparently goes way deeper than just the kissing booth. Mm-hmm. And her desire for him insane. goes way deeper than the kissing booth. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, this was inevitable. This The kind, kissing booth was kind just, of. just kind it's of happened. Just the catalyst, yeah. But I... Well, Lee's girlfriend has like three lines. She's just like in the background for yeah. the rest of the movie <clears throat> after that point. The kissing booth. I thought the kissing booth was going to be the climax of the movie because yeah. it's called the kissing booth. So I thought, mm-hmm. okay, you build to the kissing booth. I mean, you know, this movie subverted expectations. Uh, that's why it's great. <laughs> it really like turned the idea of plot on its head. But I, I expected like, okay, the, the, the culminating event is going to be this fundraiser. And yeah. like the romance is going to kind of develop. I expected like the reconciliation to happen at the kissing booth. Mm-hmm. That would make sense. That'd be kind of like a oh. nice thing maybe. Very can we, low key, can we but, talk about the reconciliation? Well, I mean, we have to get to the fight first because oh, yeah. the fight is truly crazy to me. But I have so many notes. I just I want to talk about for a second. I want to talk about the side characters that populate uh-huh. this crazy world because everyone's crazy. Um, there's um, there's there's the unnamed um, uh, black kid. The one the, I think the one black character in the movie, which is mm-hmm. you know weird and very, well, there's Gwyneth. Uh, well, yeah, I I, actually, that's true. Well, they they have one black man and one black woman, basically, who who talk at all, which is eh, a little weird. And then, um, and then he exists to pretty much just make crazy faces when things happen. Um, <laughs> there's uh, there's Tuppen, the big crazy uh, potato headed man who molests Elle and then goes oh, to yeah. take her on a date and then doesn't take her on a date and then somehow knows where she is post date. How did he find her? I don't know. And then yeah. there's yearbook, yearbook kid. I could write a thesis on yearbook kid. <laughs> I have okay. Uh, <laughs> at prom, yearbook kid posts a picture of her in her underwear on a, the wall, right? Yeah. Fully, and it, yeah. Completely. And they compliment him on that. The pictures look great. They are just pictures he takes on his phone at the spur of the moment. Have the guy have a camera. That's a character quirk. Yeah. He's a photographer. Have him have a have him have a weird old camera. That's something. That's something like vaguely comedic. It's almost a joke, like a real movie. This but, is <laughs> the, what this movie is. Is thirteen reasons why without the suicide. I wish there was more suicide in this. <laughs> <laughs> that was dark. I'm sorry, but it's <laughs> this movie makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> but <laughs> just this in movie tribute, is, is so bad. I know I can never make anything as good as the kissing booth, so I have to die. <laughs> <laughs> My life will never reach artistic completion because I know the kissing booth exists. But like, how did the administrators not say, "Hey, no, you can't, you can't post a picture of a girl in her underwear at prom <sighs> on the wall"? Was, was anyone One, there? That's like, <laughs> what's that? Was anyone from the <laughs> yeah. school even there? Because it seemed to be just students and run by the student council again. The the side characters, the British girl. Why is she British? She seems British. to be British for no other reason for them for them to reference it like twice and make almost like I can't call them jokes because they're not. <laughs> but it's the the first thing that is said. She says something and then Lee says in a terrible British accent as a joke, "You have an accent." comedy gold but then nice. later on he makes like a crack about her being french and then she says i'm british you wanker oh, yeah. so you know yeah, she's yeah. so you know she's british it mm-hmm. just really reinforces that point and then that's it she's just british for no reason yeah. maybe in the book i assume in the book she had some grand um uh, shakespearean backstory of course but it's just it's so this movie is populated with people like that the girl with the 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 headgear the braces headgear exists i don't know how you remember all these people (laughs) i've (laughs) seen this movie so many times man i've seen this movie so many times it sticks with you the only (laughs) the only side character i remember (laughs) is the guy at the um what do you call him the the guy at the gazebo who i thought that was a security guard yeah i thought that was a funny moment when he's like hey i told you to stop bringing girls around here and And she got mad that that was kind of funny 
and he was like, was "Thanks, funny. Leo, or whatever." There, his re- Leo? his relation was it? I think it's Leo. No one, Leo. Oh, they said they said Neo, like the Matrix. Oh no, Leo with an L. I Thanks, think it was Neo. Leo. <laughs> it's Keanu Reeves in makeup. <laughs> um, but I thought that was like a funny, just not not so much her reaction or her running off, but his relationship with him. Their relationship. Yeah, that together. was a fun little moment. But that was the only thing that felt like, oh, this seems like a real. A real thing. Oh, that's kind of charming. Yeah, you had like a oh, that's something. Yeah, and then um, and then it just like. But then his creepy sh- smile at the end was like, oh, this is too much. Yeah, it's very like Anakin <clears throat> Skywalkery. Like it just ugh, <laughs> just shudders. It's like oh lie. yeah, I love watching minors make out. <laughs> you know, you know he's got a camera in that gazebo setup. Oh yeah, creepy old guy. Leo's watching. <laughs> <laughs> This movie is so weird, man. It's so um, bizarre. I told you, but, it's 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 crazy. It's just nuts. But it's the so nuts. again, why did the the geeky guy give Noah a cut in line? Like Noah was <laughs> walking by. <laughs> that was so no, long ago. Noah was walking by, know. and the the geek the geeky guy was just like cutsies. Like I, he's just he's just that afraid of him, or he respects him. I don't. Do you expect me to explain the logic of the kissing yes. booth to you? Yeah. I thought that's why you made me watch it. Uh, I can't explain these things to you. You have to just try to understand on your own. You have no or choice. When she, I can't do she, this for you. She jumps off the balcony at one point and then bounces on the trampoline a bunch of times. Right. I, I feel like that's not how trampolines work. Oh, no, not at all. Fully not how they work at all. <laughs> like you would no. stop after one bounce. But she's like... Presumably, just, yes, yeah bouncing in front of the mom but the mom never sees her because that's how things work yeah the green screening in this movie is really good you can tell um they had a solid effects budget and they used every penny yeah i didn't notice any of the green screen never never once was i uh taken out of it the the trampoline green screen made me laugh real hard uh the car green screens are pretty good too oh yeah there's so many montages in this movie there's so many montages so they well, don't know let's, how to... let's get to the fight. Okay, what, the big fight. Why the big, do they the fight? break up? Because this is such a weirdly constructed sequence of events. I can't call it a scene because it's like five scenes at the same time, sort of. So Elle goes into, she's just talking to Noah, and they're mm-hmm. like, we're going to have to tell Lee about this because we're getting official, and I want to take you to prom or whatever. And then she falls over in the garage when she's grabbing a tool to help him fix his motorbike. <laughs> and then she has this wound. I know it's beat for beat. I know this movie beat for beat, man. <laughs> and then she has a wound over her, um, her I believe it's her left eyebrow. <laughs> I think it was on her cheek, and, wasn't it? And, no, that's right. Yeah, it was under her eye, not above. Um, that's right. Sorry, I have to watch this movie again to get the details right. <laughs> and then, um, and then Lee comes in. He enters the room asking if Noah knows where she is. She does not live in that house. Why would he know where she is? Did they were they supposed to meet there? I don't. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, so Lee comes in and is like, "What's going on here?" And immediately accuses his brother of beating her, punching the girl, <laughs> which, which was <laughs> really funny because he refuses to back down. He refuses to accept <clears throat> any other idea than that Noah beat the crap out yeah. of her, which is really interesting. Yeah, it's does just... not does, does not paint a pretty picture of Noah's home life with women. Um, no, so. <laughs> And then Lee storms out because he's really upset because they're going to get in a fight. And Elle goes after him and says, like, he's like, I just need to get out of here and clear my head. She's like, okay, go downstairs and start the car. And then we cut back into Noah's room. And it's the same shot as before. Yeah. It's the same angle and everything. So I thought, like, I skipped the first time I was watching this. At yeah. Because <laughs> I did too. I was I like, oh. The, I, I thought there was the, uh, a, an issue with the, the buffering or something that it like... This movie's editing is revolutionary in many ways. <laughs> um, the editor of this movie, I wrote down his name, it's um, it's Paul Millspa. Uh, he's a war criminal, I would say. I would equate him to a war <laughs> <Okay>. criminal. Because <laughs> of this movie or this movie else? is a lot like This movie is a lot like waterboarding to me. Yeah, um, that's fair. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm compliant to it now. And if, <laughs> if I, <laughs> except I want to keep being waterboarded. <laughs> And I want to waterboard all my friends. So it's not really like waterboarding. Now that I really think about it, <laughs> there, there are a few differences. But <laughs> just, the point just a is, the po- <laughs> a few differences. <laughs> this movie was actually employed during the Iraq War. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a part of the Zero Dark Thirty. 
in Guantanamo Bay, they just play this on a loop. (laughs) 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 They they play the Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes montage on a loop. (laughs) Oh, man. This movie is full of montages, too. There's so many montages. So many. And then... At the end at prom, when they go into the room with all the memories, they play the Don't You Forget About Me from The Breakfast Club. I think only because Molly Ringwald is in the movie. (laughs) Probably. Maybe that song has become really cheap because I feel like that's in a lot of things now. It could be, yeah. I mean, here's my hot take. I don't like The Breakfast Club, so whenever I hear that song, I get angry. Yeah. Breakfast Club is not very (laughs) good. I, don't I mean, understand I haven't seen why it forever. I do want to like rewatch it to get a better kind of sense of it, but I remember not liking it when I watched it, and it's always on, and people are always talking about it. There's uh-huh. a bar I go to downtown. It's like a like a arcade bar, and they always have movies playing. And oh. every Saturday night, they're playing The Breakfast Club when I go in, and I'm just trying to drink and play video games. <laughs> I thought you were gonna <laughs> say you go to a bar and they're only ever talking about The Breakfast Club, and I was like, <laughs> what bars are you going to? <laughs> That's like a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> go into a bar and everyone's just talking about, that's my twilight zone everyone's just talking about the breakfast club constantly it's just, it's just owned by Emilio estevez he's just standing behind the bar <laughs> and Emilio estevez is the bartender <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so uh what's lee thinks that lee. he punched or noah punched yeah. l and just so leaves. Then he's, yeah, he's leaving because he needs to like chill out, and she's gonna go with him. And then he, she goes back into Noah's room and agrees that, uh, okay, we're gonna tell Lee tonight. And they kiss, and then Lee teleports into the room, yeah. and is like, "What's going?" And that's when they start dropping f bombs, which really surprised me. <laughs> um, and and then he starts you know, cursing her out to yeah. an insane degree, at least by this movie standard. And then. Uh, And then he's just like, they start to get in a fight because he's like, how could you not tell me? And then, I mean, Noah's character development is that he doesn't start beating the piss out of his brother. He just kind of like pins him to the ground. And then Elle gets really upset with him, even though he was just trying to de-escalate the situation. And he didn't listen to her every command. Lee was punching him, right? He like took a couple swings and then he tackled him. And then he was like, yeah, he tackled him to the ground and held him down. Which seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, he was, like, trying to de-escalate the situation. And then Elle freaks out at Noah because she's like, you were supposed to stay upstairs. I told you to stay upstairs. Yeah. And I thought you didn't want... And she, So she became weirdly controlling. Their relationship is toxic and very dysfunctional. Yeah, like, well, that's, I don't that's think high school relationships. Kind that's of, like, but they're, like, family friends, too. Like, they should be closer. But I'm saying, like, have the only... The only way to show love in high school is to just do exactly as you're told. I guess. Yeah, you know, like I don't remember that, but that my experience was different, but eh, fair enough. Yeah, it was just like there's no there's no like understanding or nuance or like looking at intentions of someone's actions. It's just like Yeah, it is it I don't want kind of you direct. to do this thing if yeah. you do that you thing direct, you don't love but nobody me. wants to but nobody wants to be direct yeah you have to be direct but it's all ultimatums yeah high school is hell yeah <laughs> i don't know why people keep making movies about high school unless it's like spider-man i it's, yeah it's, i like i remember growing up thinking that high school was so important and now it's just like oh man that was dumb that was a dumb plot well, i mean i mean i grew up in a pretty small town and our middle school was the same as our high school mm. so i like got a sense of what high school was at least on the scale of my town pretty like quick after elementary school like yeah. there was no like middle ground really where i was like oh well, i'm not in elementary school but i'm not in high school like yeah, you just yeah. jump from element you jump from being with the little kids to being with the big kids essentially and I mean, like, it's just because there's nothing to do in my town that nobody really did anything at all. I assume in, like, Los Angeles it's different. (laughs) But I I don't know. High school stories just really kind of bore me. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with, like, um, that that movie F the Prom. You've probably seen it on, like, Netflix and stuff. I haven't watched it. The the fine – I've watched it. Uh, (laughs) I watched it with one of my friends because we like to punish each other with things like that. And um, it it was directed by the Fine Brothers from YouTube. Okay. I would – I think – it's worse than this on like a movie level. Yeah. Like on a technical level. Like this is a better, I, shockingly, this is a better made movie. Like this looks nicer. It looks like a real movie. It has like a soundtrack and things. Yeah. But like everything about F the Prom is terrible. But it's just like, it's the most generic story every time. I don't know why 
people go to like high school as this environment to tell stories because there isn't much nuance or like interesting things you can do unless you want to do something like freaks and geeks which yeah. i haven't seen and i'm so i can't say i'm a fan of but like from what i understand and from what people say it's a very nuanced interesting kind of heartbreaking mm-hmm. look at that sort of thing but this is just it's just a it's not even a love triangle because she's just friends with one of them and that doesn't it's like a it's a love line with a big barrier in the middle. Yeah. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. And then the barrier is not there, but also there. And then immediately after they start fighting, like like Elle has her falling out with both of the brothers, and then they're fighting. And even he even breaks rule number seven. She gets him ice cream, and he breaks rule number seven, which Still. broke my heart. Because like the lore is clear. You need to follow the rules. Yeah. <laughs> or so, like the a... Lore. The the ring girl comes out of your TV and murders you, right? If, if you, you read into the if you read into the kissing booth expanded universe like I have, you would know these things. You know the consequences. <laughs> and then they just meet up back at Dance Dance Revolution. God damned Dance Dance Revolution, and they just start dancing, and everything's cool, and they're best yeah. friends again because it was a fight over nothing. But they never really treat it like that. They're just like, okay, we're friends again. Yeah. And then. Noah shows up at prom and says, I love you. And she's like, I can't do this, Noah, and runs away. <gasps> and then there's the ending, the the final reconciliation, which is the craziest thing and the biggest indication that they shouldn't and be in a relationship. They they telegraph this so hard. By, yeah. Oh, no, it's very clear. Uh, <laughs> as soon so, as he oh, wears the mask, you're like, oh, okay, I know where this is going. Okay, gonna, but it doesn't make sense because uh, the brother has easily a foot of height on yeah. Lee. Noah yeah, he's got is, a foot and 50 pounds on him. There's no way you Noah would accidentally... Is, Noah looks like an inflated version of Lee. Like, there is no yeah. way you could confuse the two from any angle. <laughs> well, the thing but, is, <laughs> Lee's Lee comes on the screen wearing the mask. And I'm like, oh, that's Lee. I know who that yeah. is. Yeah. Like, me, only having had an hour and a half of time to get to know this character, seeing him in the mask, I knew exactly who it was. Now, I've spent hours with these characters. <laughs> <laughs> so <I've> spent... <laughs> this this girl who grew up with them mm-hmm. should be able to recognize who's wearing the mask and who's not. Yeah, that's true. It's just, it's insane. Like, it's so dumb. I'm going to do something soon. I might do a video this summer where I, I watch the kissing booth every day and just record how things go. <laughs> because i feel like that'd be a fun thing to do like if i have like a like a lot of spare time because i want to i want to study this movie's effect on the brain because i feel like it's not good fascinating yeah you should do it to someone else something like it'll screw you up if you do too much of it it's like acid (laughs) this is like movie acid like you can't like it it changes your perception everything is better (laughs) everything seems better it's like molly (laughs) it's just it's crazy (laughs) So uh. <laughs> Lee and L confront or L confronts Lee. He's like, Hey, if you're really my best friend, you should be happy for me. You shouldn't try to control me. You should let me yeah. do what I want to do. And you if not be controlling, like my boyfriend has been since we've known him, but <laughs> she, and she says, if not, we're not friends anymore, which is kind of the same thing. Just in reverse. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> <pretty much. laughs> we're you not friends unless unless you let me do exactly what I want to do. Like one yeah. is it's the problem is it's, it's, it's reasonable, right? Their rules are dumb. No. That's, that's where the yeah. issue is. But for her to make be like the movie, make the movie be about how the rules are dumb and they have to break free of the rules. Yeah. There's some, a way to incorporate the rules in an interesting way in yeah. like a movie way. But yeah. no, they just, the, the rules are just there. They're just, they're just ancillary to what's going on, which is nuts. Is that the yeah. word ancillary? I think that's the word. Anyway, I think so. Yeah, I'm wrong, it's just I'm on dumb. the it's on the outside. Who cares? Um, Who cares? <laughs> but yeah, so she she like gives him an ultimatum of like you either let me date your brother or we're not friends anymore, and yeah. he's like, all right, okay. And then <laughs> he they change the costumes and and they get in the car and she's driving around. I guess maybe the idea is like she's so distracted and consumed with finding Noah, she doesn't realize he's right there in front of her. Yeah. But no, the voice. The face, the height, the build. Yeah. There are 50,000 indicators that would give away that Lee did not get into the car because she would have glanced over at him at least once while yeah. driving, I assume. There were, and then, like, could you imagine? <laughs> that should have been the end of the movie. Him pretending to be Lee and her being like, what are you doing? 
and just like getting really <laughs> upset that he tried to bamboozle her like that and just be like, you know what? I thought you were someone else. Like no, emotionally, know, I thought you were someone else. And uh, I don't want to do this anymore. You're apparently. You know how this movie, you know how this movie should have that? ended? He should have taken off the mask. She gets scared and swerves into a tree and they crash and die. That's <laughs> how it should have ended. And then just cut to black. <laughs> Can you oh, imagine? That, now uh, that would be a great parody. That, that would like, be like, ending. this is a parody. I want to remake this movie shot for shot and have that ending and then release it. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be that hard. All it takes is one cut and a crash. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Maybe I'll re-edit that for just my channel. <laughs> like the go. Kissing Booth alternate ending. <laughs> but speaking of alternate endings... I've never seen this before. In the end credits of this movie, they have the uh, like bloopers playing, mm-hmm. but they also just have like deleted scenes playing. Yeah, which is nuts, because like you don't do that. You don't show other things that could have been in the movie. Like you've already shown your movie. You cut these things for a reason. Now I agree. I think that every frame of this movie that was filmed should have been this movie. I want a three-hour cut, but <laughs> <laughs> I want the extended edition, like Lord of the Rings. I think these movies are equally <laughs> important to Lord of the Rings uh, in every way. <laughs> certainly in effects but it's just it's it's insane to me to be and they cut between bloopers and deleted scenes mm. so i don't know what's real <laughs> this movie made me question reality so many times i turned it off as so soon as the credits ways. as soon as i got to the credits I was, i'm done I, you, missed had out. you missed out apparently the- it's just it's such a weird idea and they keep they keep talking about the kissing booth. Mm-hmm. No character in this movie, because they have to make the movie about the kissing booth yeah. somehow. Yeah. And maybe it was more of a recurring motif in the book, and it made more sense, and they I cut that it. stuff out, like the voiceover. I also doubt it. I'm giving Beth the benefit of the doubt here, because she was 15 years old. I give her more credit <laughs> than the, the screenwriter and director who yeah. made this movie. No, it's uh, that's reasonable to be like, she did her best, because she was 15. For 15. So. Good Making something her. that's Frankly, contrived and her. goofy. She, got, she put herself out there, and it it was I'm sure immensely profitable. I've I've watched this movie enough to make back its budget, presumably through Netflix's <laughs> system. However, it works. But, I think they I think they don't pay a ton for these originals. Oh, I, I would. Did, did this movie strike you as high budget? <laughs> but I think it's like ten you, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, this like movie that. was like, made. This movie was made for rights. the price of a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe they, they made this movie over a weekend like this is yeah uh, they filmed they filmed everything they could over a weekend every night shoot was like done in one night yeah all the night scenes are done in one night i'm trying to think of <laughs> how rained. many sets they had because there's the kissing booth there's the school well there's a lot the of just weird like there's a lot and of the weird cuts too like they'll cut to mm-hmm. like scenes and they'll be like all over the place. So I'm like, okay, they filmed a lot of stuff. And it makes me wonder if it's not like Suicide Squad where they just had so much and had to cut it down so they could use what they wanted to use. But like they had to be creative with it. That's why there's so many like montages. Or maybe it was constructed like that from the ground up, which is crazier because it's, it's absolutely insane. I think it, the, the just, montages were just to cover holes and make you feel montage, like it's fun. The opening montage was planned for sure with the voiceover and everything. Like they had the yeah. kids and everything. Like that was planned. <clears throat> but yeah. the, I think the the one later on, they were probably like, "There's a montage," and they just filmed whatever they wanted to. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. I can't. It's like, have you seen Hannibal? The show Hannibal? No. Okay, it's about, you should. It's my favorite show. It, it's about uh, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Adapting those stories. It's fantastic. I love that show to, with all my heart. And like the main character is Will Graham, and he does this um, thing where he like he profiles killers by recreating their crimes in their heads and that's what i'm trying to do with this movie like he, he he'll do like he'll walk through their crimes piece by piece and be like yeah. this is my design and that's what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to to profile the director and like go into his head and think of like the writing and the storyboarding and just like the get into the mindset that would cause someone to make the kissing booth yeah so i can like look at it and be like ah now i understand because i don't understand <laughs> well the the issue with the kissing booth is it was it's not character driven at all, right? There's no, no there's no change. It there's no, <laughs> it's driven by an event and a the relationship. Kissing booth. They're like, we should have a kissing booth. That's cool. 
and, and we they want, just keep talking about it. They want them Halfway to get through together. the movie. They're like this, and then the last line of the movie, it's crazy. This all happened because of the kissing booth, yeah. and it's like well, kind of <laughs> while she was on his motorcycle, which yeah, she just got a free motorcycle. <laughs> like that motorcycle, if I think it was a Harley, I assume it was a Harley. I mean, that family's Probably. super rich. <laughs> So it's probably was. it's probably worth between twenty and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, easily. And she just drives off with it. And she's chump change for the Flynn family. She <laughs> the kids get into Harvard, so <laughs> she wasn't even allowed to ride on the back of it in the beginning and just turned sixteen, so there's no way she knows how to drive a motorcycle. Oh, she doesn't have a license for it. No, you definitely a, not. You need a specific is that the same thing mm-hmm. in the States? You need, in in Ontario you need a specific <clears throat> like M license. You need a mo- motorcycle license. Yeah. I assume it's the same way in the States. It you is. Yeah. You can, yeah, you don't just because she get her she gets her driver's license. Mm-hmm. You don't just get to drive anything you want with a driver's license. No. <laughs> <laughs> but again, written by a fifteen year old. <laughs> But it, so, it, was, it was adapted by someone who wasn't 15. It's a confusing part. They could have fixed so many things. Yeah. Like so many things could have made more sense. But Well, because like what, what's the change, right? From the beginning to end, the only thing that changes is yeah, she's okay dating him, but okay breaking up with him. She's like, I'm going to kill all my relationships so I can be with this guy. But it's probably not going to last. You know, he's going off to school. Like, there was, like, this weird uh, reason that she ended up with. Like, a reasoning that she ended up with at the end of the movie that didn't didn't add up with the rest of her personality. Like, this yeah, is the, the yeah. most important thing for me in my life right now. I need this to happen. I'm going to destroy this friendship I've had since I was a baby. <laughs> but, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Like, I, I just uh, it, nothing about this movie makes sense. No, that's that's the pull quote. Nothing about this movie makes sense. No. Nothing at all. I don't believe a minute of it. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. If you did, I'd no. be concerned. I mean, you. I've watched this like five times. You should be concerned about that. Oh, I am. <laughs> I very much am. <laughs> the question is. I I don't have much more to say about this. How? Yeah. What do we watch next? How do we top this? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. I think it's your turn to pick next. I don't want you to tell me now. I want you to surprise me later. Yeah, I'll have to think of... I need you to think of something to top this because yeah. I've. this is my A game. This is the big guns for me. The kissing <laughs> booth is like my new Suicide Squad, I think. Yeah, because so... every, year, every year there's a movie that's like the craziest bad movie of the year. Yeah. And this is without a doubt the one in 2018. Without a doubt. Like, I don't see it get crazier than this. It was Suicide Squad, then it was Death Note, and now it's this. For the second year in a row, a Netflix original takes it. So that bodes well. I'm I'm actually reading Death Note right now. I'm like... Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's, it was pretty good. I'm going to watch the, right. the Netflix... Not the, not the animated one, but the uh, live action one. You won't like it. It's that's, not very good. That's what I hear. I hear it's pretty it's, bad. It, but, it's, but it's pretty funny. It, yeah. It's a funny bad. I, it, it was my favorite bad movie of last year, without a doubt. Is it a movie or is it a series? It's a movie. Okay. The, the newest one. The one from last year is a, is a movie, yes. Why don't we do that if you're up do for you, it? Oh, oh, actually, I'd be totally down for that. So I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. finish. I got the books go really quick. So I'm, I'm okay. like uh, three-fifths of the way through. So it shouldn't I'm take so too I'm so excited long. by this. You have no <laughs> idea how, how happy I am about this. But yeah, so next we'll do Death Note. And that will okay. be that'll be a good one, I think. So, what are your final thoughts on the kissing? Group, then? <clears throat> oh, because um, we could go on for hours, but we we got to wrap it up because we're just yeah. gonna repeat the same things because it, it'll always come back to everything is wrong. <laughs> yeah, nothing makes sense. It um, no. again, it, it it it's clearly written by someone who is going to regret it later. Like, yeah, this will be like a probably. I don't I don't know when it was published, but I imagine this will be the kind of thing where. Like if if it was big enough, like some people, I want this to get a cult following, and I want to know like what Beth does next, and I want to know if like people, if she goes to college, like if people know the name, and like, did you write the kissing booth? Yeah, because that I mean that may not be great for her self esteem because this isn't very good, but I mean, it's a story. When when I was fifteen, I wrote a book that got adapted into a Netflix original movie. Yeah, and you can't take that away from her. Good but, for Beth. That's that's a that's a success story. Absolutely. What I'm thinking is her having kids and them going to high school and her being like, "Why did I write that 
story. This is not any of the lessons I want my kids to know or be aware of. I her. picture her having kids and raising them watching the kissing booth. <laughs> Every day. It's like, this is how I'm raising my children. My future children are going to watch this very young. It's going to be like like when my dad showed me Star Wars. Like I'm going to sit my kids down and make them watch the there kissing booth. <laughs> Why Suicide are you saying squad, those words? <laughs> Never repeat those words, kids. You're four oh, years old man. and you're watching the kissing booth. But yeah, no, this movie's really <laughs> bad. Um, yeah. There's, not, there's no redeeming anything about it really no 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 no. um but it's it, fun it's if you want to watch this movie if you're curious get your friends together get a lot of alcohol you'll have a great time <laughs> i can guarantee that because i've done it many times I, I feel like sci-fi originals would be way better than this though if that's your goal no th- this gets fun if you don't know what you're going into if you think it's like a weird teen movie mm-hmm. and then like Maybe it's just me like pointing out all the weird little details I notice now. But yeah. just if you think about anything that happens in this movie for like a second, it becomes hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. comic gold. It was uh it was a tough a tough one to get through. I was just but like, I'm glad, what? We, I'm glad you powered happening? through. I'm glad <laughs> yeah. you powered through. I guess uh, you made me watch three God's Not Dead movies. Uh, well, okay. You, you, you sick man. You're I sick did man. send you a picture of ice cream, so you need to forgive this that. That's true. I do and need to forgive God's you. God's Not Dead 3 was pretty good. I wouldn't say it was pretty good, but it I, was better. <laughs> Can we not go back? I don't want to think about that movie ever again. It makes me confused. <laughs> it makes me upset. You mad. gave it a 7 out of 10. No, I did On a scale like of all four. movies. A 4. No, you gave it a 7. A 4. You give no, it a seven, sir. That's slander, and I won't stand for. I'm hanging up on you. How dare you? <laughs> well, before you go, how can people find you? <laughs> uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel. It's Ross McIntyre. My Twitter, uh, it's all linked together. And I'm actually making YouTube videos again <laughs> consistently soon. So look forward to that. Yeah, you just did uh, uh, Spider Man, right? You and your buddy. Yeah, uh, a, did commentary a commentary video. video. And we're going to start doing those uh, weekly or bi-weekly. We're recording them weekly at the very least. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely getting back on the uh, pumping out videos consistently grind mode because yeah. I've been slacking too much and it's uh, it's too much fun and getting too profitable. <laughs> <laughs> I need my, I'm need. i a student. Any money I can get, I need. And if it means making videos for money, which I love doing, I should definitely do that more. So I will. You should. You love making money from making videos, or you love making. I love videos? making videos, and I love making money, and I can do both at the same time. Yeah. Very beneficial. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Well, but also money. We will... Mainly money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish right up now. the Death Note, the Death Note books, and then watch that, and then we'll get back together and talk Fantastic. about that travesty. I'm I'm excited because you. I haven't read the books because I and I haven't watched the anime, uh, but. Uh, the movie alone in a bubble, the movie was absolutely insane. So I can only oh, imagine really? what you'll think about it because you'll the, probably have a lot of like adaptation questions because I know yeah. they changed a lot. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be mad. I think you're going to be mad. A lot of people are <laughs> mad. <laughs> well, because there's 12, 12 books. Right. Um, and the movie's like an out. But like they're manga. Hours. Manga? Manga? Yeah. Manga. Why do you say that know. word? Manga. I think it's manga. They're comic books. Essentially, which one? But they're yeah. longer than they're just like a comic right. book. But oh, absolutely, uh, they're they're actually the story is really engaging. It's really interesting. But there are some okay. like really goofy stuff. Um, and oh, I think course. part of that is the translation, and then part of that is just the tone of anime manga sure. stuff, where it's like fair, yeah, everything so intense. Like, it's kind of off kilter. It's a very different sensibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's really good, and I okay. hear the show or the movies awful. <laughs> so I'm like super okay. excited about that. But yeah, oh, so yeah. you'll we'll have a good time. We'll do that in probably a few weeks from now. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, sweet, yeah, no yeah. rush. Thanks for coming on. It was good Absolutely. times. Thanks for having me. Yeah, the movie. this has been the best of times and the worst of times. I it, think at the same time, mostly the worst of times. But you know, that's how okay. dare you? You loved it. You know, you loved it. This movie's a ten out of ten. I won't hear any different. <laughs> All right, uh, but me and Taylor will be back in a couple of days with our next episode.